Hi everybody, my name is Jed Johnson, I'm from DieselCrew.com, and I'm a strength coach in Pennsylvania. And what I want to talk to you about today is ACL tears, what causes them, and how to prevent them. So real quick, just a little bit of background on what exactly the ACL is. The ACL is in your knee, and it stands for the anterior cruciate ligament. I've got a, a drawing of a knee right here. So this is your upper leg bone, your femur, then your tibia, your lower leg bone, the bigger one, and then the fibula sits here as well. The dotted line here is your kneecap. Okay, so if we look behind the kneecap, we're going to see uh, a ligament here that connects the femur with the tibia. So that is the ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament. And what it's there for is stability. It keeps your knee stable. So when is this important? This is extremely important for really anybody. But in particular, athletes are susceptible to ACL tears. You'll hear about this all the time. And unfortunately, they happen all too often. They, they happen in lower levels of athletics, with youth, in the high school level, in the university level and even all, at, all the way at the professional level, level. You'll hear about this taking place in the NBA, in the NFL, uh, NHL. It's possible in all those places. So what exactly is an ACL tear? <clears throat> First off, there's two main types of ACL tears. So you can have what's called a contact ACL tear. So if you get hit in the knee or if you get piled up upon in a football pile, you can have damage that takes place to your ACL. That's called a contact ACL tear. The other type of ACL tear is a non-contact ACL tear. So instead of you getting hit by something or by someone or getting something dropped on top of you, you're just having this injury take place because you're moving. So these generally take place when there's some sort of deceleration that's going on. So Along those lines, you're thinking of jumping and then landing. You've got to decelerate your body. When you change direction, so maybe you're going from a straight line to a cut and you've got to veer off to an angle, that would be a change of direction. What maybe you might actually be completely changing direction and go from going from a forward progress and then you have to stop and then quickly accelerate in the other direction. Okay, so those are all possibilities of changes of direction and deceleration that take place that can cause problems with the ACL and it doesn't even require someone else to hit you again they're non-contact injuries they can just take place due to poor preparation poor condition okay so why exactly do these non-contact ACL injuries take place well a lot of times these happen because the athlete is what we call quad dominant all right, so what exactly goes on in the knee? The knee has all kinds of tissue. There's much more there than just the ACL. But since we're talking about the ACL, that's all I've drawn there. Everything in there works together. There's plenty of muscle on all sides. Lots of different connective tissues that are there as well. But because the, an the anterior cruciate ligament is there for stabilization, whenever you're moving and then you begin to decelerate when you're moving forward, the ACL is going to play a role in, in keeping your knee stable. The musculature should take the majority of the load, but here's the problem. If you're quad dominant, you've got the quad muscles, the big, the big muscles on the front of your leg. If they are creating the deceleration force, then what happens is as they flex, they're actually pulling on the tibia, the lower bone. So the quads are up here, they connect down through the, through the tell it down onto the tibia. So as you're slowing, this knee is coming forward and it's also pulling the tibia forward. So there's a lot of stress going on in the knee. And if the quads are the only thing or the primary decelerators, then when this happens, there's a lot of stress that goes on right there at the ACL. Okay. So again, as the knee, all right, we're decelerating, the knee starts to come forward because the, the athlete is quad dominant, the stress takes place on the ACL, and then bam, that's when the ACL can tear. Now, the problem is these ACL tears are not just some minor 
some minor injury. They can require surgery to, rep uh, to repair, and then that often results in a lot of downtime. You end up missing a large portion of your season or maybe the end of the season when it matters most because you're getting into tournament time and, and championship time. And at the very worst, these injuries can be career-threatening. Some athletes, after having the tears and the repairs, they're, they're just never the same again because, because of the damage. So what we've talked about so far is what exactly the ACL is, where it's at, what its role is. We've also talked about what causes the tear, these deceleration type movements. We also mentioned that when, that when athletes are quad dominant, they have a more, uh, a higher risk towards having the, these ACL tears. So what's the solution? I have a really good friend named Jerry Shrek. He is, he runs VarietyTrainer.com. I've known this guy for years. And he's been dealing with ACL tears for the last 10, 12 years. He's a professional uh, strength and conditioning coach at Division I Athletics. And um, he's been dealing with this for a long time. What he's designed is a program that will take an athlete who is quad dominant and make them more, more stronger in the glute area. You see, the glutes are the strongest, most powerful muscle in your body. And a lot of people think of the glutes as primarily the muscles that create power. They create your drive. They create that powerful hip extension that allows you to leap, jump, um, leap over things, stride, you know, powerful running abilities. And yeah, the glutes are definitely involved in that. But at the same time, if you do things properly, your glutes will decelerate your body. So our program trains athletes to use their glutes to decelerate their body properly. So after a few weeks, once they've learned how to decelerate their body properly, their glutes are activated again, and then their power creation is even, is even better improved. So not only can they land from a jump and be more injury free, they can also decelerate from running and be more injury free, and also they can be much better at changing directions and not only are they injury free, but they can do this more quickly. That results in better, faster cuts. You can be more, better offensive player. You can pick up on defense better. And this is carry over to all sports that are, that are stop and go sports. So you're looking at things like volleyball, lacrosse, field hockey, football, um, even, uh, you know, there's, there's tons of different sports, soccer. All these things involve moving in a direction, then you've got to stop, then you've got to change direction. So athletes will benefit, all those athletes will benefit from this type of training. The problem is a lot of athletes these days are quad dominant, and then also they've got very tight hip flexors. You'll hear that discussed quite often in much of the research and the texts and the DVDs that are available today because people are sitting so often. And think about it, high school athlete, they're sitting all day at school. They're sitting in their car or on the bus. Um, so automatically, all that time seated puts their hip flexors in a shortened position, makes the hip flexors tight. And we know that anytime something on one side of the body is tight, then the part on the other side of the body is generally weakened. Okay. So we've seen it many times with a, with a forward posture such as this with tight pecs. The, the upper back is going to be weak. The same thing with hips. So with tight hip flexors, weak glutes, now it compounds the problem even more. Quad dominance puts pressure on the knee, weak glutes, even more reliance on the quads, and it's a recipe for a very serious injury to the ACL. And we know how drastic that can be. So, uh, like I said, Jerry and I have worked together to put out a product and it's called deceleration training to prevent ACL tears. There's other products that are out on the market that are available, but I think you're going to see once you go down through this, this is much different from the other things that are, on, that are, that are available. So if you look down below this video, you're going to see a link. You can check out the program there, and I think you're going to be very pleasantly surprised at what we've put together. This is a progression, a systematic progression. It starts out with identifying the issues that the athlete has and works 
to correct those issues and then strengthen all those aspects step in a step-by-step -step process. This is something that can benefit athletes that train themselves or it's perfect for coaches and trainers that work with athletes on top of it. All right, so that's all I've got for you today. If there's any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. But like I said, make sure to check the link below. It's going to take you right to deceleration training. All the best.